We focus on the breath because we're convinced that this is a good place to be, a good way to train the mind. And we're bringing the mind to an important place here in the present moment where we can see our intentions. And we're convinced that we can change our intentions if they're not skillful. And this is the, one of the best ways of doing it, getting the mind to settle down, have a sense of well-being, being solidly here in the present moment, clearly here in the present moment, so you can see yourself, see the mind in action, realizing that the causes of suffering come from within, so you're watching the right place. If the so causes of suffering came from without, you'd have to go and watch everybody else. That's why we have a surveillance country right now, cameras everywhere taking pictures of everybody, face recognition, because nobody trusts anyone else, but it's because they think the causes of suffering from outside, that they'd be perfectly fine as long as they could be protected from other people. But as the Buddha saw, you protect yourself from other people, you're still a victim of your own ignorance, your own craving. And the suffering you create through the ignorance and craving weighs a lot more heavily on the mind. So this is where we do our surveillance, inside. We're convinced of this because of the example set by the Buddha and his noble disciples. This is how they found the end of suffering, how they found true happiness. That conviction is wealth. It's one of the seven forms of noble wealth that the Buddha talks about. Because think of what it's like to live in a world where you don't believe there's been anybody who's found an end of suffering. Or you live in a world where it depends on some capricious god who plays favorites and is totally inscrutable. That would be a very poor world to live in. But we have the conviction that Buddha's awakening. You're convinced that the power to put an end to suffering lies in your own hands, in your thoughts, your words, your deeds. These are things over which you can exert some control. Now, all too often we don't exert the proper control, but we can learn. Get some control over our actions, control over our words, control over the thoughts going into our minds the thoughts that we'd latch on to in our minds. The way do you do that? You're by trying to be mindful as you can right here. So conviction is not just a, a floating idea that we give our assent to. If you're really convinced, you not only assent to the ideas, but you also act on them. That's how you, how you know when your conviction is genuine. And that's when it becomes genuine wealth. Otherwise, it's just decoration around the house, something pretty to put on the walls. But it turns out it doesn't have that much value. It's when you bring this belief into your actions, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, that's when it has wealth. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's when it has value. So think of this conviction as a form of wealth. Protect your wealth. Invest it well. And it will grow day by day.